What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, sinks and inks, or as the late, great Bernie Mac said, what's up, you squares? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Track Talk. I'm your host, Dominic Smith. This is a part of the Lactic Acid Network, and it's only available on YouTube, so be sure to subscribe to the Lactic Acid with Dominic Smith the YouTube page. Trust me, you do not want to miss it. My guest for tonight is the legend in track and field. If you remember uh, his son. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm going to have you talk about yourself in a second. But uh, if you remember, if you listen to the Lactic Acid podcast, you know that his son uh, was on the show. I think it was like the sixth episode. It was sometime in December, fifth or sixth episode. Um, Alex Shields, he runs up at Kent State, had a great year. Um, and his father, like I said, is a legend in the sport, coaches some great athletes, and uh, probably the most athletic family <laughs> in the history of the United States. Uh, <laughs> we put it all together. His wife was an Olympian. Uh, I know your father. I met him at stakes. Uh, he ran track. Uh, you were big time baller oh, up God, there in yeah. Pittsburgh. Um, and everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. So uh, he's none other than, and I got a chance to coach with him back in the day too. He is none yeah. other than Mr. Brett Shields. Mr. Shields, hey. good to have you. Hello, show, hello, man. hello. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I, 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 yeah, this is nice. This is, I'm glad we got a chance to do this. Yeah, definitely. He has a show with Coach Lewis um, who couldn't join us tonight, but we will have him on as we kind of dive into this track season, which incredibly is almost over. Um, really, it ends next, wow. ends next wow. month, uh, when you think about it. But um, he will be on the show as well. They have a show that airs on Facebook on Wednesday nights called Out the Blocks. And the UCF head coach, if I'm not mistaken, um, Coach Donna, joins you as well. If I got oh, her no. name wrong. No, no uh, UCF head coach is Coach Dana Boom. Coach Dana uh, but- yeah, but Donna Donna uh, Hainsworth is uh, also our, our other co-host. Yes, so out forgive of, me uh, on, out of the Richmond area. Mm-hmm. Forgive me for that. As you know, there's just ex- <laughs> there's excellence on that show. So definitely, uh, stay tuned on um, Wednesday nights, especially if you're a parent. If you are a parent coaching high school athletes, and your child has potential to get. Um, a chance to race at the next level and compete at the next level. Or if you're just a coach looking for coaching tips or if you're an athlete looking uh, to better yourself, there's a lot of great information that goes on um, in that Facebook Live um, episodes on Wednesday night. So definitely you do not want to miss it. But let's get into the business, man. But actually, no, I want to say you're not a big deal. I want No, you got to tell the people who you are, man. Go go ahead and, and tell nah. them the accolades oh. that you have. Oh, man. No. Um, wow. I, I don't look at it as accolades, man. I just look at it as life experience, I guess. But, uh, you know, I had a, I had a really nice uh, high school career. Um, you know, I was a state champion four or five times, hurdle state champion, both indoors and outdoors in uh, the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, ran collegiately at Pitt. Um, you know, was uh, an all Big East performer, um, made it to uh, to national, to the big dance, right? You know, this time of season, uh, a couple, a uh, few times and uh, with disastrous results, I must, I must, I must say. <laughs> but uh, you know what? That's, that's part of the game, man, uh, part of the experience. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, from there, man, I've just been a student uh, of the sport, a fan of the sport. I love it. I uh, love every aspect of it, the competition, the camaraderie, um, and, uh, you know, the, the, I guess, kind of the science of it, which is crazy because I hate science as a subject. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just the, the physical nature of it and, you know, really trying to, uh, uh, and, figure out, all right, how do we, how do we get better at, at this particular physical discipline and, um, you know, and helping kids along the way, you know, that's, that's really a big thing for me is helping kids get from, you know, one step to the next and, and help them once they're off to college and, you know, they fly on the, pretty much fly on their own, but it seems, you know, they, they still, they come back. So. <laughs> yeah. If you coach high school athlete, collegiate athletes, even professional athletes, 
um, in your coaching tenure and stuff. So, like I said, you call it life experiences. You can get six in one hand, half a dozen in the other hand. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, it's good to have you on the show, and let's jump into it. Yes, sir. Glenn Mills um, said, made some interesting comments that I agree with, and I want to get your thoughts on it, but pretty much that the sport missed the boat. boat on Usain Bolt when it comes Usain to Bolt. using him yeah. to grow the sport. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. What, what, do, what do you think about his comments? Yeah, yeah, I think he's right on the mark. You know, track and field, uh, you know, internationally, it, you know, you, it's now World Athletics. It was the IAAF, you know, they changed because IAAF screwed it up so bad. Yeah. Um, and, and continuously shot itself in the foot. Um, you know, I mean, when you have someone of his, of Usain Bolt's popularity and you don't capitalize on that or have no sense of how to capitalize on that, you know, I mean, I, I just, I, I failed to, to understand how the sport, how the leaders of this sport just continue to trip over their shoestrings and not figure out, wow, when we have this, you know, superpower, you know, star athlete, how do we capitalize on it? Well, go to the sports who figured it out, go to the NBA, go to the NFL. I mean, they NFL figured it out with Tom Brady, you know, they figure it out over and over again with, you know, with athletes, the NBA figured it out with Michael Jordan and literally transformed the NBA around Michael Jordan. You know, everybody wanted to be like Mike. And now while Gatorade, they, all right, they got a piece of Usain Bolt. Um, Puma, which is, Puma is a, a, a good brand, a product brand, but it doesn't have the worldwide uh, draw that Nike has or Adidas has. Um, and there's no way, you know, the, the difficulty with the, with the brands and all is that, and now I think if Usain Bolt was with Nike, he probably would have had a better shot. Mm. You know, the sport would have had a better shot with it, but you know, they, they're too headstrong to, you know, to try and figure it out, you know, together for the betterment of the sport. Um, you know, and, and world athletics, they just, they're pathetic <laughs> at best. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's just just being nice and so kind there oh oh yeah yeah you know i i was thinking about it <clears throat> think about all of the personalities in this sport that has just gone unused from a talent standpoint so you got yep. allison felix allison felix who's about to retire and nike screwed that one up <laughs> Nike messed that one up, and yeah, they did. she and and I'm going to say it, you know, once I get done with the athletes, because there's a common theme. Allison Felix, what is Sonia Richards Ross doing right now? She's commentating, she, but she has her own uh, the Housewives. Yeah. She's on Housewives, yeah, and she's on Housewives. That's right, and that's her second show. Yep. Um, uh, love her, or hate her, but Shakari Richardson. And, and that's the thing. And let me, and I got to say something. About I Shakira. agree. I got to say this about, about her. She tends to run in the hundred, the race. She runs the like 95 meters. And that last five meters, she'll start celebrating. I'm telling she's you, celebrating. I just have this feeling. She, that's going to bite her sooner rather than later. Because Prandini, oh, wow. almost, got, Prandini yeah. almost got her. Almost got her, yeah. Yeah, she did. Um, well, you know, but here's here's the flip side of that. She still has a horrible start. So if she figures the start part of that out. Oh, then she's uh, she's got the it. Uh, uh, it's a three woman race without question. Her, Elaine and Shelly and Shelly. Ann. We're going to get to that in a minute. So, yeah, because uh, I there, there's there's <laughs> so many. You can make an argument for 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 others, but man that's uh at the moment but oh there was a young up and comer who just dropped that's a little, that's who i was just about to say 
I was just yeah. about to say Tamar yeah. Brown, she I think she's gonna have something to say. I yeah, really do. And, yeah. and then hey, the girl who went to our school, Tiana Daniels. Now she's not on that level. Tiana. Mm -hmm. But not yet. Yeah. not yet. That's but not yet. She will be. But the one thing about her is she shows up. That's she does. It. She Nobody does. talks about her and she right. deserves more respect. And I think in a couple years, she's going to be in that 10, 5, 10, 6 range. But she shows up. She definitely shows up. Yeah. But she has a great personality. Sport mm -hmm. hasn't used her. You got Gabby Thomas, uh, a Harvard, <laughs> went to Harvard and is running professional track. They don't use yeah. her. Uh, right. Noah Lyles. Mm -hmm. Fred Curley, Michael Norman, Rod Bench, Grant Holloway. Grant, those, yep. those are just yep. current athletes. I don't know. You know, I'm not sure if the sport, I doubt it. You know, Jackie Joan Kersey and Flojo and Gail yeah. Devers. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, 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 you know, just some of those legends, <clears throat> Jeremy Warner and all those guys. I don't know yeah. if they properly used them. My guess based on what we're seeing is no. But nah. that is just millions yeah. of dollars just going down the drain. You know, one of the last best ones that was used, um, interestingly enough, resulted in a in a big old Olympics, you know, failure, which oh, was well. Dan O'Brien. Yeah. Right? Dan O'Brien. Yeah. I mean, they had they had a great um, you know, uh, a, a, a great plan, great marketing plan for him and Dan uh uh Dan uh Johnson, is it? Yeah. Yeah, Dan and Dave, Dave Johnson, sorry. Dave Johnson. <laughs> yeah, Dave Johnson. So, man, they had the marketing bits. It was all you saw the whole summer. Dan and Dave, Dan and Dave, Dan. Pe to this day, people still talk about that. You know, they talk, they're like, oh, man, you remember those commercials, those two guys? I'm like, yeah, Dan and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one guy, he screwed it up, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's, it's something that sticks with you. You know, they had a, yeah. they had a whole thing around it, but uh, and you know, that sticks with people and, um, you know, but man, I mean, you look at, uh, some of the names over, over time. I mean, gosh, even Carl Lewis, he was yeah. a household name, love him or hate him. He's a household name in the sport. And, you know, there was every, listen, I don't, I don't know too many cats back then, young, young boy, you know, coming up that didn't want to be like Carl Lewis. Right, because he's running, he got flat top, you know, everything, you know, he's doing four, you know, the four events. Hey, everybody wanted to be that, but uh, and nobody figured out. I don't know why track and field has uh, has such a struggle. I mean, like, like you don't employ marketing people. <laughs> but here's the thing, <laughs> hey, but to your point, you know, the first time I heard about Carl Lewis, the first time. Uh -huh. I did not know that he was a track star. It was that doggone national anthem in Houston. <laughs> and I was like, who is this? And they're like, I was like, oh, that's Carl Lewis. I'm like, who, who is Carl Lewis? Is he a yeah. singer that didn't make yeah. it? Which, I mean, yes, but. Well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but that's the first time. I didn't, man, I'm telling you, I didn't know he ran track. Only to find yeah. out he's one of the best sprinters. One of the best ever ever run somebody yeah. on the show today that i did and that episode will be released in a couple weeks told me something i asked her a specific question and then it just got my mind thinking track and field is one of the sports where it is handed to you on a silver platter with somebody willing to cut your food and feed it to you and they mm -hmm. keep their mouth closed what was the comedian um Leslie, she's on Saturday Night Live. Oh, oh Leslie Jones. Leslie Jones. Yeah. Who loves track and field. Yes. Kevin Hart, who has done stuff for track and field. Mm -hmm. All That's just one phone call you got to make. Right. And bam. Right. Yeah. Somebody, and the, the athlete told me, uh, Val Constein, she said, what about Stoop Dog? I'm like... Because I asked her, yeah. who who would you want to narrate a race? And she said Snoop Dogg. I thought that was genius. Now, Snoop yeah. has been narrating boxing. He's right. narrated basketball. Right. He's, he's, he's done. A, he's a household name. He's a and household voice. name. Yes. 
and voice. Yeah. People will pay to see his reaction. Absolutely. And well, that's the thing is, is how do you get the, you get to draw the celebrities to it, right? You know, one of the difficulties though of track and field, and I, I get it, especially in, in the state like, like we're, we're in, in Florida, is to draw people out to it. It's hot, right? It, it's in the, in, the, in the hot part of the year, but how do you make that uh, uh, bearable, <laughs> right? Other than the Olympics, other than for high school, the state championships or, you know, or uh, being in Oregon where it's likely to be chilly during the biggest collegiate meet of the year, right? Um, on a, a fantastic facility, probably the, maybe the best in the world but it's outside likely to London, be chilly. Yeah, yeah. yeah outside raining. of London. Yeah. So, um, you know, how do you draw people out there to that? You know, you, you can do it for maybe for the world championships because, you know, it's a little bit, you got a little more time for it, you know, to, to get warm and uh, the, the weather conditions to improve. But, um, but I think even still, they have that type of facility, Oregon does, that you can accommodate people and, and make it, uh, you know, more, um, you know, easier to, uh, to enjoy the sport. But I, I'm telling you, people enjoy track and field when they're out yes. there. Because I remember, and this was the thing I remember in college. So we ran, uh, when I was at Pittsburgh, we won a shuttle hurdle relay um, one year. I think it was my, my, my freshman year. And so we came off, we ran our victory lap and everything, came off the track. And uh, this was 19, yeah, well, this is, you know, back in the day. Back anyway, the day. <laughs> <laughs> but came off the track, came off, gone up, back up into the stands. And who do I see right there? But everybody knows this dude, kid from Kid and Play. Oh, wow. Was there. And he was like, yo, you just won that race over there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he daps up and everything. And I was, and I'm just like, wow, this is Kid. You know, I want to take a picture and everything. Can't find a picture, of course. But, <laughs> man. but but it was cool man you know because so somebody like that immediately recognizes you because they're really they're engaged in watching it and enjoying the sport how do you get people like that out you know to to enjoy the sport um and not just you know from behind the tv screen well two things so i think it's very possible because there's a stadium in new york yeah. You know, where they're running the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. They just redid Mount Sac. Yes. And yes. then you got some of these athletes, kids who, like Chad Johnson or Chad Ocho Cinco. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm who is? Shiel is amazing. I mean, that girl that, going, that's, she could be the next a thing Mo coming. Yeah. Type. Yeah. Like that's yeah. somebody you need. I don't know if she broke Sinclair's record. Um, state championship record but i know she ran 208 she ran that's, 208 right yeah as a sophomore as a sophomore yeah. that's the one you need to watch and so yep. but then you know but chad you know he's talking to these people but then i feel like as a sport first off the thing about eugene i've been i was blessed enough to go cover pre last year but i can tell you something man it is hard to get into Eugene, Oregon. Yes, it is. It is hard. It is expensive. Yeah. And when you get there, the opportunities are limited. It's like going yeah. to church during the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, man. Like, you're not yeah. going to find a seat. It, it's just, it's hard to, you know, get places. And then even if you do that, there's not much that I at least saw. You know, unless you want to go drive a few miles to go on a hike, there's right. not too much that you no, can do there. It's not no, there's not much to do, not much to see. Uh, but you know, that that's that's the the house that Nike built, right? So and they built it right in their backyard, basically. And uh man, uh gosh, I mean that's the only thing there. I that, mean, why, that is, yeah. Like I mean they you could have they could have done it at I mean, somewhere in Texas, even. Nah, not in Texas. That's too hot, man. That's oppressive. That's oppressively yes. hot. <laughs> that no, see, that's that's how you knock those. But they could have done it in Portland. Portland yeah. is easier. 
They could have done, yeah, they could have done it in Portland. I mean, there's a number of places they could have done it. I mean, even, you know, but, uh, and I guess, you know, getting people w- whichever coast, you know, eh, who, you know, who knows, but I mean, shoot, you can get people in and out of uh, Atlanta. Yeah. You know, I mean, that to me, that that's probably the most prime place to have top notch uh, events because yeah. you know from taking everything in together right the the proximity for travel uh from either coast you know even even if you're coming from the west coast there are flights direct flights from every point right pretty much um and you know you can drive to it there's almost unlimited places to stay um yeah you know yeah i mean it, it you know it's a, a place with real life um uh, now that bad traffic that but bad traffic but you know um you get in still, trouble in atlanta too <laughs> yeah, well like i was gonna say, to say but that could go off the rails a little bit too <laughs> so you know you gotta yeah, yeah you know you gotta you know take one with the other but <laughs> no man a little bit but uh, atlanta would be a fantastic place to to have uh, you know, some of the top events, you know, for track and field in, in, in this uh, in this country. But it's like everybody, I remember LeBron James was overseas and was in the stadium watching Caster uh, Simania. Mm-hmm. And that is the, I, don't, I, forget, I think she was running the 1500 or something like that. Yeah. And they took a picture and stuff after. I'm like, man. But instead, we're interacting with Tyreek Hill and all these people who, listen, I watched, I forgot who at the time, I think they said John Wall was the fastest in the NBA. And I watched Aries Merritt, who probably has never broken 10 in the 100, smoke him. Oh, yeah. Like it was, like it was nobody's yeah. business. Oh, yeah. And so we concentrate on that and i'm just going to come out and say it's stupid oh, it's, it's stupid. stupid but yeah. we're focusing on that stupidity but i guarantee if you call snoop and it, my thing is start with tv but what i'm doing mm-hmm. is track and field has gaps see if you can flex it for for two hours or two and a half hours or even cut an event but let snoop do a quick set yeah or something like that you know get get um, get the yeah get people get yeah get get people really engaged interest you know something else that that brings them together i mean what do people want to see in the nba you know the, the halftime show right the nfl the super bowl you want to see the halftime show so there's got to be something else other than just the game you know from a uh a, 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 an event enjoyment standpoint that draws people in uh and I'll tell you, man, it, it hit me on, I don't know, it's this weekend maybe, but I was flipping some channel and it just made me go, oh my God, I can't believe. It made me really think just how bad uh, track and field is, is doing um, at, at publicizing and, and marketing the sport. I turn on broadcast CBS and what do I see? Cornhole. But g- yeah. Cornhole championship. I said cornhole champ, man. That's on three channels. Me? That's on yeah. three channels and ESPN two. It's a shame, man. It is like okay, I get it, but there is far more people running track than playing dag on cornhole. <laughs> and track and field is the sport of sports. It is the original sport. So and but it lags behind everything else. Now, part of that, I think, too, is because, you know, people are scared of track and field. You know, athletes get scared of track and field. They don't they don't want to train for it. They don't want to hurt. You know, you got a lot of, uh, you know, football players who never ran, who are wildly talented, but they don't want that. They don't want, you know, they, they don't want this proverbial smoke, right? Because yeah. yeah. it's work. It's re- just to be a 100-meter sprinter, which you're like, man, 100 meters, that's nothing. Yeah, anybody can run 100 true but to train for truly train for 100 meters that's a different animal at that level at that sub 10 level no no man that's a that's a whole different level a whole different 
type of training commitment and everything. So, um, and to be consistent and to be consistent. Absolutely. I mean, gosh, look at, I mean, Usain Bolt and, 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 and honestly, Usain Bolt, nah, the person who really missed it, well, unfortunately, man, is a Safa pal. Sub, he, sub 10 King. And you know, let me at, just say this. He did I, a know, good I job did, this weekend. Yeah. Uh, he did do a good day. job. He did do a good job. He did an excellent job. He's, uh, he was, you know, very insightful. You know, he knew it more than anything. And I could, you know, I probably said some not so kind things about a few broadcasters, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, he knew the athletes, he's current, right? He knows who people are, what they do, what they're capable of. And he made a, a, a very good point. Um, and when uh, he, he said, you know, if he had to pick one athlete to do almost any event, he said it would be Sidney McLaughlin. Easy. 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 Because, and, and I thought about it for a second. I went, all right, four. You know, she runs, she's sub 50 open four, no doubt. Uh, but then you start thinking, go, well, wait a minute. She did just, you know, just because run a 222-3. Mm -hmm. Just because. <laughs> she so, could probably what? go sub 22, sub uh, sub 11, sub, sub 11, sub 50, sub two, sub two minutes in the, in the eight, sub two minutes in the eight. I don't think it's any question. No. And the, then the I'm question to me is how close to 155 does she go? Oh, I don't think she gets that close. I think she's a 158. Really? Yeah. Hey, 150, maybe 157. Again, if she tr if she truly trained for it. Oh, now if she truly trained yeah. for it, she yeah, she, yeah. I said this. I would love to see her and a thing mo go head to head in a four hundred or an open eight hundred. Mm, yeah. I think that is must see TV. Um, she and then I think she could be a good long jumper. I think possibly. She Who knows? Who knows? I mean, super talent, super and super I, super talent. I do remember remember that quote, and that's actually a great you know transition because she ran fifty one sixty one sixty one in her first race, <sighs> which is crazy, which is which is crazy to me. Okay, and yeah. and the hurdles were wrong. The fifth hurdle. Now here's the thing, I. In high school, I, I just saw you a few weeks back at yeah. Lake Highland. Yep. And yep. one of the coaches were, was screaming at the official, listen, the hurdles are wrong, the hurdles, because they did not properly switch, you know, take the hurdles up for the oh. for the boys after the for girls. The boys. Correct. Correct. This is a professional track meet, man. That's yep. all. We just talked about how they're not utilizing the athletes and how the sport in general is is just they would rather cut off feet to save shoes, and you have a blunder that bad, and it's not yeah. the first time they've messed up like that. No, uh, the 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 Noah Lyles incident at IMG. How does that happen? Like how in the world? I'm like, hold on, IMG has markings on that track going both ways, and it don't take uh, any measure of a genius <laughs> to figure out where. 200 meters begins at one side of the track or the other. The other side. But yet he started, what, 10 meters or something? 180. Forward at 180. 180. 20 meters. Yeah. 20. I, that's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Listen, yeah, so, hey. uh, and then there's officiating. Yeah, so that's that's a whole nother thing. And uh, oh my gosh. Officiating yeah. has been bad in all sports this year, but the track and field, yeah. I've seen. In the in the four hundred at pre, I forgot the athlete who who uh, raised his hand, but they were just, they're just sending the blocks, and I'm like, what, what are you? And I think uh, Sonia yeah. Richards Ross alluded to it. What are you waiting on? What like, are you what waiting are you, on to shoot the gun? The, yeah, like let's let let's get this going, or you right. pop the gun too quick, and then the athlete is not ready. Right. Why are we sitting here waiting? I do not understand. Like, I don't know if it's uh, a, it's something of them not putting the money into proper 
you know, officiating or just and Vanderbilt turned out to be a fantastic track. I think they should host yeah. the SEC championship soon because mm-hmm. some fast times were blazing on that track. They were, I, they were. That was surprise. I was surprised I by, by did, the, yeah. the performances on that track. That was there were some slow yeah. performances, and then there were some performances. The women's 200. Yeah. Um, like 21 9, that's surprised to Safa Powell. Um, yeah. But man, to be on, on television, on ESPN, you know, do that and yeah. on USATF where everybody has to pay for a subscription. Right. But right. don't do but on that. ESPN, on ESPN, you get on ESPN. Thank goodness it was on ESPN too and not, you know, the. <laughs> You know the prime ESPN. Oh my god! <laughs> Where everybody, you know, everybody's watching. But um, man, but you know, the only thing I take out of it is that fortunately they didn't figure that out right at that moment. Yeah. And what it only looked like was, oh my gosh, Sydney. And I don't think enough of a big deal was made out of that performance. Fifty-one six, the third fast in third fastest time in history was run on a season opener. That was like Ryan. The only thing that trumps that is Ryan Krauser breaking a world record in his first throw. He comes out, boom, world record. But he does that. That, See, Ryan Krauser, every throw he does is a world record. I think the only, that one and then Michael Norman a couple years ago, running 43-45. 43-4, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was... Really? Sid is better than that uh, to me because if the hurdles, if she didn't stutter, I think she could have broken her world record. But to give, yeah, to give like, man. some clarity to how fast that was, her hurdle time was faster than the open 400 time. I know. <laughs> like that... <laughs> and, well, that's the thing. Is they take it, they take the time away from her. It can't be, you know, legitimized as one of the all-time great performances. But she still went over 10 barriers over 400 meters. So I don't care how you do it, that's still 10 barriers over 400 meters. And and her steps were not correct. She stuttered. Actually, she stuttered, I'll say two and a half, mm. because coming into the on the straightaway. She didn't stutter as much as she did those other, the earlier ones, but I think it was number eight or number, or I'm sorry, either, yeah, number eight or number nine, where she just, she quickened up her step. You could tell she quickened her step up, but mm-hmm. she didn't, she didn't literally like, oh, shoot, chip, chip, because I'm about to hit this hurdle, you know, but man, 51, six. So me, immediately, Coach Lewis and I were on the phone going, oh, my gosh, did you see that? And how fast? Okay, what's next? I said, there's no question in my mind whatsoever, having been a person who ran the sport. She'll run, she, I'll, she'll run faster than I ever ran. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not even ashamed to say that. <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's just – that yeah. is – that is crazy. Like, yeah. and the thing is, and I want to ask you this, man. In the men's 400 hurdles and in the women's 400 hurdles. So let me say this about the women's. I don't think Sydney's going to be beat. I just, I just don't. Nah. But let's start with the women's. Can she be pushed? Oh, she will be pushed. The but little I mean, Muhammad is just that athlete. Right, that but she's thirty one or thirty. She's uh, yeah, by the championship. She's, yeah, thirty thirty one. But you know what? Listen, it'll be enough of even if she doesn't have that world record, you know, type of uh, um, performance in her. She's got it. I would say at least. 350 meters worth of it in <laughs> I, I agree with that. <laughs> you know, because she, man, she is one of the toughest. And it's a shame that she didn't get her shine for how great yeah. uh, uh, a 400 hurdler she was yeah. or is. I'm sorry, not was, but I don't mean to speak past tense. She's still here. 
and she's still very relevant, but how great she is. I mean, my gosh. And if anybody missed, and I'm sure people missed it, just how great a runner she is, when she got that stick on that four by four in the Olympics. Ooh, she was gone. Oh my God. It's like somebody shot her out of a daggone cannon. She was I, flying. I, you know, and you can always, people always play with splits and everything else. But my gosh, she had to have had the fastest split. From a I, visual standpoint, she had the best leg. No question. She took off, and I was like, there's no way. I was like, she's going to slow down once we get to that. And she kept going. She and going. kept it was, on going. It she reminded me of a prime Allison Felix and Sonia Richards. Because those, in my opinion, yeah. from what I've seen, those are the two, in terms of the women's 4x4, four four, those mm-hmm. are the best. But yes. yeah, yeah. now you got Sid and you know Delilah, and she she took off mm-hmm. muhammad i i don't know if she can win i don't know my heart wants to say yes i really do because i'm a fan yeah. of hers and yeah, i remember yeah, yeah. the first time she broke the record because i mm-hmm. loved it how that was the most aggressive race i've ever seen outside Absolutely. of wade, wade van nee kirk's uh right Late 403 yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. And I, I hope he gets better. That, that's still... Boy, that's a tough one. Listen, that's, you, that's a lesson in don't do what you don't do. Okay, athletes. <laughs> if you don't also, play basketball, don't play basketball. Don't go out there playing touch football. But if rugby. Ch- rugby? I mean, dude, that is one of the roughest sports out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh my gosh i i yeah. still hope he gets back i know he's running right yeah. now and he's struggling and i really hope he gets back to full form yeah. oh my gosh femke or femke bowl i, I know i'm mm. pronouncing her name femke yep yeah femke now i know everybody she ran 53 94 but it was it was very cold conditions and raining or mm-hmm. whatever the case might be mm-hmm. But at 300 time, that 300 hurdle time. Wow, 36. Wow. She I, was I, moving, dude. I mean, I, she does not have the foot speed that Sydney has. That's the right. that's the big difference. Right. But I think it wouldn't surprise me if we're down to the last 20 meters and mm-hmm. Sydney barely crosses the line between the two of them. And, uh, and nobody's that's, that's talking possibility. Yeah. And nobody's talking yeah. about her. Yeah. Really, nobody's yeah. really giving her a chance. And I, I just don't. I saw a tweet today saying um, that she has no chance based on the time that she ran. And I'm like, you can't say oh, that. I, oh no, nah, that's an uninformed. That's an uninformed comment right there. Femke <sighs> Bowl is is the one of the top three in the world, without question. I mean, you can't look at a woman who just ran 36 seconds in the 300 meters, well, I don't care if she, you know, is, you know, smacking at the wind in the last 100 meters. She's still going to run fast. You know, I mean, my gosh. Now, Femke Bo is, she, she too will push, uh, I mean, the person that comes to mind first for me, uh, you know, when it comes to, uh, Sydney is is Delilah because they just been going you know back you know forth. back and forth blow for blow, um, but you know uh, yeah after right after man is is Femke Bowl and not and I mean it is a uh, gosh a, a thousandth of a second right behind is Femke Bowl and she just she is proving and here's the thing with Femke Bowl is she's only twenty one. I don't I think, think she's I think she's 20. she's either 20, she's either 20 or 21. She yeah. she's that's the next 10 years, tell you, man. That's why yeah. it's like we, we have to do better by these athletes when it comes to track and field coverage. Um, because and I didn't even mention Sydney. The, there's so many things that the sport should be investing in. Like I said, I'm 28. If they call me and say, hey, can you be a part of the marketing team? I have a journalism degree, but I promise you <laughs> that I can I could come up with something, that, you know, that could benefit. Man, if they called you. Yeah, you, you absolutely. 
Um, uh, that's that's neither here nor there. Oh man, hey, listen, my wife is a marketing professional, and we're both, you know, track and field, uh, you know, have you know track and field background. So yeah, we could come up with a bet- much better strategy than <laughs> than than what you know World Athletics and USA Track and Field is is doing. I mean, which my is, God, which is nothing. They're which just is the, is nothing. Yeah, the, they're the content. Athlete. They're content to be a not even a secondary, a tertiary, a third level sport, and that's only seen every four years. Um, you know, by by the the general public, the fact that we have the world championships on U.S. soil should be. I, I haven't seen it publicized almost anywhere nope. i mean that should have been all it should be all over espn it should be all over nbc nbc is horrible as far as uh track and field is concerned they are absolutely horrible um and and you know it, they my gosh they it be they get it because they have the olympics they don't have track and field they have the olympics so Man, get some other channel, USA Network, something, you know, yeah, TNT, something. TBS, something, you know, that, you know, can take it as a sport and and really, you know, publicize it and, and help it to thrive. But but NBC, terrible. And they're and they do the same thing. Like I'm a fan of swimming, but they do swimming yeah. the same way that they do same track way. it. And yep. it seems like you know, I don't know as much about swimming as I do track and field, but it seems yeah. like all the federations are kind of the same, um, which which is a shame. And the athletes kind of have to fend for themselves in terms mm-hmm. of getting their name out there, which is just ridiculous. But yeah, I want to ask you a question about the men's. I said this on the show the other week. I, I really hope Warholm is okay. Um, yes. At yeah. first, at first yeah. it was, he said, I think I tore it, but then he said, I think it's a cramp. Hmm. Um, I still feel Rod Benjamin is going to win. Um, I feel like he has to win this year. He has to. Um, it's, it's on your, it's on U.S. soil. You've won great times there. I feel like he, you've got to win this year. Yep. Allison Dos Santos. That's a problem. <laughs> do That's you problem. think? Do you think that he can win this? Yes. Yes. So Absolutely. for him, so for him to win, so I guess I'm asking. You think he's a guy that this year is a can go 45 seconds? Uh because I, I think, think it's going. It's going to take mm. something around that to win, like I mean, just mm. like it did. I think, yeah, I think yeah. forty-five ninety-three or something like that can win it. it has to win it. That's like, do you think he is that for this year? Now, I think yeah. next year and then in Paris, absolutely. Yeah. So this year, uh, I absolutely think he. Yeah, I, I think he's got a great shot at it. You know, based on what I've seen from him so far. His races have been, man, easy. I won't say, you know, not easy like, uh, you know, walk in the park, but, you know, he hasn't had any real struggle. And he no. beat Rye head to head already. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, for Rye Benjamin, that's got to be sitting in his head like, hold on a second. Man, I, I, I can't beat Warhol. I got everybody else. I've had everybody else. Hold up. Man, now I got to, I, I, now those Santos? Yeah. I got, you know, I got to worry about him. So, you know, no, you had to worry about those Santos from last year because he also <laughs> he, yeah. he also ran forty six. So, you know, you can't forget about that guy. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, I mean the top what top three times in history ran in that race. I mean, that dude's still there, and he's still he he himself early twenties. He's younger than Ryan. Yeah. Oh, so. Yeah. You know, so he, you know, has he, the question about, you know, people like the Santos and, and Bo is, have they hit their prime yet? No, 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 they could, there's no way they hit their prime yet. So, 
you know, that being the case, uh, he has to be considered a contender for the title. Um, and, but now that said, I think that Rye is, he's still, he's got the best foot speed out there. Mm -hmm. Rye, there's no question about that. Um, you know, he, he's got a great foot speed. To me, I think he's got, uh, they've got to do better in his, with his race planning. You know, uh, I think his race planning is off. Uh, I think if he ran, if he had run the final, the Olympic final, the way he ran the semifinal, oh, yeah. he would have won. He would have won because he was more patient in the semifinal. And, you know, he didn't stress with the race at mm -hmm. all. I mean, he went through the first half of that race in oh my gosh I forget what it what it was like 20 22 seconds or mm. or 21 or something easy I mean that was the I'm like whoa he went and the rest of it was just it was just all academic after that yeah. you know and he was it was smooth easy he went off the track like you know nothing really happened nothing major happened and he, I mean, you look at his time, like he ran that time that easy. Wow. When he really puts the hammer down. Now, the thing is, if you think, think about, if you remember some of uh, like Michael Johnson's old races, right? Like when he mm -hmm. broke world record, you could see Michael Johnson, when he entered past 200 meters at about the 180 mark, you would see this demonstrative just acceleration rye benjamin made the mistake of to me of doing that too early because he knew warholm was going to go yeah all he had to do was be patient because warholm to me reacts to the competition i agree with that because no no doubt he's not faster than benjamin by any stretch you mm -hmm. line them up in any race 100 to 400 Benjamin beats him in every one of them. But Warholm reacts to the competition and says, yo, I got something different and I'm going to fight you. I, you know, this is going to be a, 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 a Muhammad Ali, Tyson, Joe, you know, Frazier, you know, fight. And I don't mind taking them punches. Yeah, he all the way aggressive. to the finish. He was, yeah. like, Warholm was aggressive, man. He has such long strides. He has long strides. He, he maintains it. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see because Michael Norman, and I'm wondering if they will center towards that race plan. For the first time in two years, at 200, Michael Norman put his foot in the ground and took off at 200 in the, in the 400. And you saw 44 6 out of it. Feel like to what you're saying, if Rod Benjamin can kind of keep that consistency, mm -hmm. then he'll be okay. Because he, I don't, I don't know what his exact uh 200 time is, but it's it's like I thought it was like 2003. I don't know if he's broken. Yeah, I thought he actually I thought he went 199. And he could have, he probably yeah. has, but yeah, I thought, yeah. There's nobody that has the foot speed in the field that he does, which is why I think it is imperative that he wins this year because Dos Santos, yeah. like I said, I just, I think next year beyond, but it does not, if we don't know how Karsten is health, health wise, mm -hmm. but if he's not ready to go, then Dos Santos can easily match Benjamin. But my thing yes. is, I yes. don't think he has, the foot speed right now now i think next year year after yeah. like you said yes. next year paris oh yeah this is gonna be a hot take I, and i'm just gonna say <laughs> i think if warholm wins this will be the last year he wins agree i agree. think it will be well now well the, the, the challenge for him is how does he come back from that hamstring because that's still that's still trauma and you're, to, you're the, to the leg mentally and boy that means like right now he's he's off he's off of that thing for a couple weeks so and these is yeah. this is this is prime training time right now 
This ain't the to time get. to miss. This is not the time to miss. So, you know, for him, you know, to miss right now, miss some prime training, it's gonna be a it's gonna be an uphill journey for him. Uh, you know, though I think he can get back and you know, there's no question he's still gonna be in the world championship final. Oh, for sure. But but does he have 46, and, and I'm not even going to say 45, because right now that's out of the realm of possibility. Um, you know, does he have 46 mid to low in him, which is what it's going to take to win? He, he will and, get a medal. I think he'll get a bronze medal at, at, at the very least. Well, here's what's the, the, the difficult part is right behind Dos Santos is Abderrahman Samba. Yeah, I, why did I forget about him? Because he's really He's one of the too. early guys who went 46. He went so, 46 because he was up there with Roy a couple of years ago. And I, gosh, I totally forgot about him. And I don't know yes. why I, I did. So <laughs> let me let yeah. me let me take that back because yeah. he's he's still a beast too. Yes, he is. I, t- I tell you what though, cold weather's not good for a hamstring. So I'm actually curious to no. see. If he gets to Eugene and Eugene is gets cooler, yeah. Um, well, he from come he come from a cold climate, so you know it might work out for him. That's fine, but I still want to be running. <laughs> if I have a hamstring problem, <laughs> you want I want it, I want it hot. Yeah, yeah, and everything. Right. So let's mm-hmm. get to the last topic. We'll wrap this up with a bow. Yeah, NCAA's are in a couple days, and there's a lot going on. What's the overview? What are you kind of looking out for in these championships? Uh, wow. You know, I, I'm looking at, uh, you know, some of the, who, you know, some of the, 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 the prime time people, um, you know, men's, men's sprints, um, you know, 100, 200. Who's, you know, I think the 100, honestly, I don't see anybody beating, um, uh, man, who's a young man from, from Oregon? Makai. Oh, my, oh Makai Williams. Yeah, Makai Williams. Now, if he, if, he, if he gets his race off, I don't see anybody, you know, I don't see anybody beating him. I know, uh, was it Favor Ash from Tennessee? Yeah, that was a 9-7, but that was a win eight, I think. Um, and there's a and kid from New Orleans who's pretty good, too. A kid from New Orleans who is good, yes. You know, he showed up, but then even still – uh, he, he showed vulnerability, you know, yeah. at the, at the, at the East region. Um, w- but, uh, what's the name? Um, you know, uh, who is it? Joe, Joe Fambula, I think ran him down. Yeah. Fambula. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that dude, that dude, you talk about if he scariest, gets a start, if he get, listen, he don't even have to have a good start where, He's right there with everybody. If he's only a step behind, it's over. It's over. Both it's... 100 and 200. You know, but he hasn't had that one yet. And I'm going to say yet, because everybody gets one at some point. Right? That was going to be my hot take, too. That was going to be my hot take. This mm-hmm. is the me that he gets an average start and I, I do, I cannot wait to see the time. As long as I just hope it's win, yeah. win aided. Well, I mean, win legal. Win legal, yeah. I think Man. if he gets, I'll say average start, Joe Fambler goes 19-7. Win legal. Oh, yeah. Easy. Yeah. Easy. He goes 19-7, win legal. Um, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's just got that in him. I mean, that is. They, I mean, no, nobody's ever seen, nobody's seen anything like this, this kid, you know, the way he finishes. And what's most impressive is that he does not panic. No. He knows his race. He knows himself, how he runs, and he doesn't panic, clearly, because at, you know, it, yeah, it's about how you start, but it's more about how you finish, right? And he knows how he's going to finish. And and he, uh, man, boy, does he finish. Whew. I don't know if I've ever <laughs> seen an athlete, probably Usain Bolt, but with better top-end speed. Yeah. Because when he gets going, it's just he like, goes, yeah. 
And honestly, I don't think he should run the hundred. Honestly, that is because mm-hmm. there's just not unless he if he does if for whatever reason that start does not. That's get too fixed. hard of a. That's too hard. Too much of a pull. Exactly. You know, for him. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I'm interested, man. Looking on the women's side. Hmm. That women's. I think the women's two hundred. Oh, the is women's two hundred. I can't wait to see that boy. I think Abby Stein is pulling that one off. I, that's her better race. It is her better race. And I and think she she barely pulls it off, but I think she wins. I'll t- I agree with you, and I'm going to tell you why. Because she is a sub-50, 400-meter leg. That's she, why she pulls it off. SEC championship. Wow. I did not know that she could do that. I was yeah. shocked. Oh, man. Dude, that's been, I don't know why that's been a secret. She has been, she has dropped re, some serious relay leg, four by four relay legs. So that's, that should not be a secret to anybody. Really. I didn't see it. Uh, I didn't see it. Man, I mean, but dude, she put, she put one down on them there. That was, that was insane. Like and 48 I mean, something, man. 48 something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so clearly, you know, she, she's coming with that. Whew, I think that's what is going to give her the edge in that 200. I'm going to tell you something. I, don't, I may get some heat for this. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Melissa Jefferson wins the 100. I can roll with you on that. Yeah. We just yeah. talked about Tiana Daniels. Melissa Jefferson, Why not? Jefferson has shown up. Oh, yeah. She's shown up. Every, yeah. And I understand what they're doing at Texas, who will probably take the team title. Yep. Uh, you yep. know, for, you know, some of these other schools, Florida will probably have something to say. We'll see what Kentucky yeah. and those do. Yeah. Yep. But Melissa shows up. Yeah. She shows up, and she's not afraid of the moment. So I think she takes the women's 100. Yeah. Here's a wild card that I, I just don't know how it's going to turn out. Mm-hmm. Matthew Bowling. Yeah, I, I I don't now he's not Wild competing card. in the long jump. He's competing in the yep. relays. Yep. I do not think he he beats um Fambula or Fambule in the 200 because I've seen it when they've raced before. He mm-hmm. Matthew Bowling's in control of that race until the end. And it's not anything that he does. It's just you got this freak of nature just come. It's like a linebacker <laughs> I know. Come, coming coming downhill, um, and I just yeah. don't think he's. But it wouldn't well, shock me. I will say this: it wouldn't it shock, wouldn't me, shock if he, me if he won. It wouldn't no, shock me if, if bowling won. No, no, this is great. It wouldn't shock me if he won the hundred. Actually, that that would shock me more. Really, first, honestly, yeah. Because, you know, he, depending on his start, to me, he gets a better start in the 200 than That's he does true. in the 100. That is true. Right? It's inconsistent and, and, in the 100. In the, in, yeah, in the 100, he's in, very inconsistent with his start. In the 200, he is, to me, I think he's pretty consistent now. And that is the edge he's going to have on on uh, Joe Fambula. Um, you know, he he's... If and, and it's going to depend on the lane draw too, yeah. Right for the when they get to the finals, I think that if bowling is behind Fambula, oh, he, he loses. Yeah, I think he's going to have to play rabbit and get out there and uh, and run away from it, and you know put pressure on Fambula from the start. Um, and, and the thing is, you know, Matthew Bowling, this dude is a 44 split, four by mm-hmm. 400 meter split. So clearly he's got the, the strength, the, you know, the, the speed endurance. The, the problem for him, I think, is it's up here. Mental. Yeah. The mental. He can't handle that pressure that's coming and maintain his form enough. Now we've seen it improve from last year, 
right? Last year, he just falls apart and he's just all over the place, you know, arms, and he's just fighting his way to the, the finish. And all of a sudden, yeah, I think, you know, he, he, you know, new coach, coached him up. He's even gotten better through the year, through this whole oh, yeah. year, right? And you can see the improvements, but he's really going to have to maintain mental strength to, uh, to hold on. So I agree with that. Do you think, I think I'm trying to figure out any other upsets. Well, I don't I see a, it. I have a oh. good matchup for you. What, what women, you women's 400 hurdles. Oh, Anna Hall, this. Anna Hall, Britton Wilson from Arkansas. Now, remember, wanna... Brit, Britton Wilson went 50 point in the 400, came back and went 53 mm -hmm. in the 400 hurdles. Which was no, crazy. Which is crazy. And no other woman has gone 53 in the 400 hurdles this year. Now, Anna Hall is... She's different. Is, she is different. My goodness. She's running 203 in the 800. She can long jump, high jump. She can run the sprint hurdles, the long hurdles. It's crazy. Man, wow. This girl, she is, I mean, she, she's, man, I can't wait. To, I don't, who knows what her limit is, right? And what her best event is, almost like Sydney, right? McLaughlin, what is truly her best, best That's event? But, but uh, you know, I would love to throw uh, Masai Russell in there just because she fights so hard. You know, she, yeah. she's little, you know, she's little and <laughs> she's know, a fighter. And she, and she is a fighter. She she runs, at, but and who knows if she hits a perfect race, she she could be right there. But I still, you know, those Britton Wilson and and Anna Hall, man, I think that right there will be a slugfest of a race. One I'm interested in: Randolph Ross versus um, Jones from texas so no, i'm not mistaken ain't no that's, race. The, I, personally i don't think so. <laughs> i feel i get you i get you that's <laughs> just one and it's it is one more i'm interested in to see if how do i put this you remember when norman raced oh boy what is this i think akeem bloomfield bloomfield from tennessee yeah. but we knew Norman was going to win. Yeah. But Akeem pushed him to yeah. get to that 44, 6, 43, 61. 43, yeah. That's what I'm curious of. Yeah. Can Jones push him enough hmm. to, to put a serious dent to mm -hmm. like a 43, 75 or 43, 60, yeah. or something like that? Can he put? So. Yeah. Yeah. Because he has the 800 meter strength, Jones. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm like, like I said, I'm not betting against Ross. Like this is, I, yeah. I, this is this the last race for him. <laughs> last race, I'm not mistaken. His dad's and that, his last race. He's not and that's lose. and that's what I'm putting. I'm like, man, listen. If at any if any athlete is ever going to be more ready than him right now, yeah, I ain't buying it. If <laughs> you tell me that, no, nope, I ain't buying he, it. He, I mean, he's, he's got. There's just too much, too much you know, that's on the line, you know, is, is, you know, the end of that, his college career, I think it was going to be the end of his college career either way. Right. You know, it, cause it's just time, you know, it's just time for him to, to go and turn pro. There's nothing else for him to prove other than, you know, staying around and, you know, get, getting his degree, which he can get and work that into his pro contract and have them pay for it. So, you know, anyway, so, but, uh, so, you know, he's been to the Olympics. He wants to get to the world championship, you know, and then, you know, uh, come back again and get ready for the, the next uh, championship cycle. So, and his dad is, is moving on. His dad slash coach is moving on. Uh, hey, he wants to bring a, a big, you know, another big one for him before, you know, I, I would think for him and, you know, for the school to represent the school again, and well as he has you know throughout his career and 
besides that, he ran uh, at the East Regional. That 400 meter? 44-2. 44-2. And made, you know, made the field look like they were uh, at the Junior Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, though, man. It's For real. I mean, they look, I was like, hold up. Ain't Champ Allison in this race? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Curious to see how he does, too. But yeah, um, I don't see anybody touching him. I will say this. Yeah, Champ yeah. Allison. I expect him to be in the final, but uh, he's he's not going to be in. Uh, I don't I don't see him being in the top two. No, I you think know. maybe top four. Top four uh, yeah. for sure. I will say this. I think Randolph Ross is the biggest beneficiary of Worlds being next month. Mm -hmm. and it being in Eugene because I just I, yeah. I feel some kind of way about college athletes getting on the team because once they get to that destination they're wiped out they are wiped out oh yeah, yeah. physically mentally and you know it's it's a listen world championships or Olympics it's not college it's 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 levels to this oh yeah um, oh yeah but I think he could be the biggest beneficiary because Let's travel. You're in one location, and it's quicker. Uh, yep. Last one, team championships. So you got one of the men's and the women's. Ah, uh, wow. The men's. Boy, I don't know, man. That's that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, I think it's a bit of a toss up. Um, I, I I couldn't I. I hadn't really picked the men's. Uh, women's, I got Texas. Who would you put? I got Texas too. But for yeah. the men's, who who who's like the top three? Who would you say are in um, um, I think I would have to put, uh, still, you probably got to put Texas in that conversation. Florida. Um, and depending... You know, and this is where schools like Arkansas and um, uh, Oregon come into play is they have distance runners. Yep. So uh, I would look at you know, one of those two potential. I think Florida. I think Florida, Florida's got some, they got, yeah, they got some good depth and, uh, you know, they'll show up. They're four by four team. I'll say they, they got some, some teams that are coming, trying to make some noise. But I don't – well, I'll put it this way. They better hope that a and doesn't figure out one leg. Yes. I was just thinking that. One leg. They got one leg to figure out. And if they do – It's over. I'm, uh, it's an upset. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm picking Florida – but I, think, I still pick Florida because but, they consistently, they are consistently, they, they're doing the thing. And, you know, but a and t and I'm going to tell you this too. I'm going to tell you this too. If a and doesn't figure it out, Florida will win. Okay, here's my hot take. Florida will lose either the four by one or the four by four. And I'm going to tell you why they're going to lose the four by four, four by one. You said a and I still feel strongly about this. I know people are gonna think I'm crazy. Do mm -hmm. not sleep on Houston. Do oh, not four, on the four by one in the four by. There's just something yeah. about that team. There's just the four this, by one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They may not have the entire foot speed, but there's something. Carlos has those dudes humming at the right time. Absolutely, and that, listen, their handoffs are pristine. Yes. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Don't sleep yes. on Houston. Uh, Team USA, that's one way to solve your relay problems. Um, <laughs> yeah, but how about that? That's that's just... Uh. Anyway, man, tell the people where they can find you. Tell them about Out of the Box, Out the Blocks. Yeah, so uh, Out the Blocks, uh, we're on. Uh, myself, uh, Coach Rob Lewis, Coach Donna Hainsworth on Wednesdays at 8.30 on Facebook. Uh, we're out there. We'll be out. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be live again on uh, this Wednesday, and 
Uh, we'll probably be doing some some live takes on the uh, uh, the men's side of the men's start of the NCAA championships. Absolutely. Be sure to follow that. You can follow Lactic Asset on Twitter, Lactic Asset underscore pod, on Instagram, Lactic Asset Podcast, and obviously on YouTube, where you can exclusively get this series, Lactic Asset with Dominic Smith. We'll see you next time.